Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another webinar. Uh, this one is focusing on uh, FX Expansion Strobe. Um, and I tend to enjoy this one because it's probably the most analog, virtual analog synth you run into. Um, so let's go uh, left and right. Okay, we'll start at the bottom. So bottom is obviously like our voice and control. So uh, and our arpeggiator. So this deals with notes. Um, we have our glide and our pitch, our legato and our retrig, um, our bend up amount and bend down amount. Bend down amount. So you can increase this to drag it up. I tend to like to have my bendy bendy uh, positive twelve and negative twelve. So it's a full octave, twelve notes octave. Um, your voices and your unison, so you would boost the unison, the voices boost up too. So one voice is one note at a time. We have to get through this before we can move on. One voice is one voice at a time. If we, have, if we select two voices, that sounds kind of bad. It's a little loud, but I think we'll be okay. It's two voices, uh, two notes at a time. Three, five, five voices at a time. So when you think about it, if you have two voices and you have the release of the ampli the amplifier section, like elongated, and you press two, they go into each other. You can see on the uh, kind of oscilloscope there. And you can hear it too. We have an oscilloscope and a spectrum analyzer just for fun. We have, a, we have overlap. So if you're thinking of playing uh, two notes at a time and you want the tail to not go into the next two, it'll reset it kind of thing because you can only have two voices. Um, you can only have two notes simultaneously playing at once. So yeah, just think about that when you kind of want to do uh, lots of uh, pol polyphony. If you want to use lots of polyphony, uh, you usually have to double the amount of voices that you plan on using at one time. Hope that makes sense. So, that being said, when you increase the unison, oh, it goes up to two voices, but you can only press one voice at a time. What's happening is, is you only you can only press one note at a time. So what's happening is, it's taking the synth and it's splitting it into two separate synths. So you'd have uh, two times unison. So you're basically stacking, and you can get some crazy uh, thirty-two. Voices of Unison. My apologies to the sound department. You can get really crazy with that. But for the sake of this tutorial and what this synth kind of, the overall, you know, soul of this synth is, I would uh, suggest you stick to one voice. It's a very deep synthesizer. And I hope the sound is good. So uh, that kind of goes over uh, this kind of section here. We also have an arpeggiator. So you turn that on with this little button here and you press a note and it plays music for you. But it doesn't because we have the uh, release set high. So we'll move the release back down or we'll just go and we'll init it again. My favorite preset is the init preset. So turn that back on and it kind of just goes really. And you can adjust the range. You can go down and then uh, up, down. Select the range again. Right. And uh, you can set that to be the gate to be mono or the song. I'm not sure what that means, but we'll figure it out later. And I'm sure you can play it in... No, you can't play it in chord mode. So it doesn't matter. All right. So there's our arpeggiator. So now we have that kind of down. Uh, which I would guess I guess I would call it the note voice section. We can get into the synth. So usually, yeah, you'd start here. You'd select. Oh, I want to play how many notes at once? Okay, I want my pitch up, pitch down, yada yada yada. Uh, my glide. Do I want uh, my glide to kind of uh, yeah linear time? If I want it to kind of go up. That's with this little pitch knob here. So you get, uh, you know, that kind of modern housey sound, which is pretty cool. Or the, your Moomiton sound, if you want to have like a single uh, oscillator going up and down. Afrojack, I'm looking at you. So, okay, here we go. So we have uh, 
our quote unquote single oscillator. So it's one oscillator. Um, but it has a bunch of these guys. So really, it's one, two, two, four, yeah, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven, seven um, generators. So that's pretty neat. So we have, uh, um, they're activated via a mixer you don't actually turn them on or off they're always going um just think about them kind of always going so the saw is currently going now you have a nice little readout here uh, you can input a square or you can just have a square which isn't if you look at the, uh, the uh, oscilloscope bottom left it's not a perfect square i will zoom in It's not a perfect square. It has more of a, uh, it's a triangular square if we're getting into that. So your mixer is here. You kind of work this way. Uh, you have your pitch, your sync, your stack, your detune, uh, and your modulation options, which we'll get into later. So your pitch, obviously, your pitch goes up and down. Go back to zero. There we go. I click on it and I just type zero in and it goes back to zero. Um, I have my stack. So you get like a hypersaw-ish type thing. And you're more kind of detuned-ish-ness here. So you get more of a richer sound and I guess we can stack five, five of these oscillators. And then we can you know, boost the voices up, and we have trance. A very analog type of trance. So we will reset that. Um, we have our sync mode. Uh, kind of hard to explain, but look at the oscilloscope down here. No, wait. Look at the saw. So what it does is it kind of doubles you can look at it right here too. It doubles um, the it doubles the amount of saws. Well, it, what it does is it splits it up. It's called hard syncing. It splits up like a section and then like doubles that. You can see it here. So none. You can double it up to twelve. And then it doubles it. Double it up. You know, twenty-four. For those who are good at math, we can have it somewhere in between to get a really kind of interesting hard sync sound. Don't know how that works, but that's basically what it does. So think of it as um, a way to, to kind of add interesting harmonics by messing around with some sort of a, a retrigger or something. All right, so we got that. We have saw, square, and noise. Uh, saw is a saw. Uh, a square is a square. Uh, it has like a, a saw and a square basically have quite a bit of harmonics. Um, and these are constantly going. And they're re-triggered via a gate, which is when you press a key. And... Um, they, uh, the mixer kind of activates them. So 0%, yeah, 100% open, right? And what you do is you mix them subtractively and uh, you get cool sounds. Right, so there's that. Um, next up, uh, we have uh, a sub oscillator, which is reminiscent of like Moog synths. We have a sine, so a sine has no, well, it has one harmonic. And it's a sub, and you select. I'll just show you what it sounds like. We have a very low sound, um, and it's just a sine wave. Yeah, it kind of looks like that. Perfect. Right, and we can adjust the octave. We want it one uh, octave down, which is 12 semitones, one octave down. So it's an octave below whatever note we press. Right, let's so give you an example. We'll have a triangle. A triangle is a sine, but it has slightly more harmonics. All those blue things there, those are harmonics from what I've read. Uh, generally, I'm a big fan of the saw sub oscillator or the square. So I can mix in a saw or 
start another square. Or I can drop in another saw. Or a triangle if I want a very deep sound. So we're getting a very interesting kind of uh, uh, waveforms uh, coming out. So there's that. So you're mixing in um, your fundamental, your fundamental, fundamental oscillators via this mixer section, saw, square, and noise. Noise is just bits of random information. Uh, and it's... And it's just random information. And uh, that contributes to your analog sound, which we'll get into later. So you have your fundamental uh, oscillators here, and then you have your sub-oscillators here, and you can mix and match them. These are the only ones you can mix, mix and match. You can have uh, your saw and square at different kind of octaves, which I find odd, but it is one oscillator, so who knows? Maybe that's what they were going for. All right, so I'll do that. Cool. Uh, all right, so we'll reset that. We have something interesting called pulse width um, changing. Right, so you'll, you'll have these two knobs here, and you'll play around with them, and they won't do anything. Like, what is going on? So I'll reset that again. What the pulse width does is it only alters a square wave. Square wave of your fundamental area here, your mixer section, and your sub oscillator. So what does it do? Well, it adjusts the pulse width of this thing here, or the bottom one, uh, depending on which way you go. So the top one would be for this square, and it only works for the square only. So check this out. Right? So you can get like a very like bitey sound that makes any sense. And you can move it up so much so that it becomes a silent oscillator. So that's very that's a very fine pulse, uh, and that's used in electronics. I don't know why. So you can do it with that, uh, or you and or you can do it with the sub oscillator. And it's controlled by the sub pulse width of your square here. So you can make a uh, more interesting sound. So think of this as kind of like a like a post like shaping uh, option. So you have this right. You have your square selected, so you can adjust the pulse with the square, and you can change uh, your the the timbre of your sound just by changing this, the pulse. And you can add more. Right, and you can do some pretty wacky stuff wacky wacky so we have that so we have that section oscillator pulse width okay the filter section now this is very exciting I like this part so we have our signal uh, which could be anything and uh, we have our filter section which uh, kind of breathes life so the cutoff We'll focus on the low pass for now. The cutoff uh, takes away the higher frequencies. Right, like a filter would. But what makes this synth kind of amazing in my books, I'm not being paid to say that, uh, is the drive. So the drive is basically uh, the stage between the mixer section uh, going into the filter. So this is like the volume going into the filter, not coming out, the volume going in. And when you boost this, say we have it down here, we are basically uh, rounding off and saturating and making uh, very rich kind of harmonic changes to our sound here. So we're making sort of a square wave right now. Oh yeah, what it can do is it can, it can actually round off uh, the triangle, triangular square into an actual square. Maybe let's see. No, well, it can do it with a sine wave for sure. Yeah, 
it can do that. Anyway, so there's our drive. So what it does is it basically um, adds upper harmonics, uh, pleasing upper harmonics, kind of like a guitar pedal or a guitar amp uh, makes an electric guitar sound more interesting. Damn it. So we have our sine wave here. Not a whole lot of uh, harmonics. Right, right down here. Right down here. We boost the drive. We're adding harmonics. And making things sound more interesting. All right, we have that. And that's all well and good. Right, so a filter really adds some cool stuff. There's also the uh, resonance, and that uh, kind of boosts the cutoff point. So right now it's a uh, low pass um, four pull. We can go, yeah, we'll stick to low pass four pull for now. Um, so when you think of poles, more poles equals more cutoff. So this is, uh, you can see it right here. This is a uh, four pull. That's two pull. It's more of a smoother cutoff. And you can get up to like eight. You know, 16, 48, uh, some are 12. And uh, the filter's character depends on the pole and depends on a few other things. So, so we're taking, with the filter, we're taking away the upper harmonics. My apologies to the sound department. And with the resonance, we're adding harmonics to that cutoff point. We're adding lots of rich harmonics to an otherwise simple sound. Right, and that's what resonance does. So we're going, we're getting into uh, the most, you know, this is overlooked uh, quite a bit from what I see, but it's probably also very spectacular. So we have our, our sound here. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, we we then have another amplifier section. So we have our drive, which would be overdrive saturation. Cool, cool. After the filter, we're going to have our, our amplifier section. So right now it's set at zero. We're going to move our level down so we don't blow speakers. Make it very quiet, and then we'll boost the amplifier. There we go. Now we now have a square. You do it with the amp. So that's just with a saw. So we've turned a saw into a square wave, which is quite powerful. Let's add a square wave. We'll adjust the pulse width. We'll add some noise, which gets accentuated by the drive in the amplifier section. And that is by far the closest thing to analog, that analog sound uh, that you can get with a plugin, in my semi professional opinion. Right, and that's just with a, a bit of overdrive, a cutoff, you know, a filter, and the amplifier. The amplifier really adds to it. Right, kind of boring. But when we bring that amplifier up, it adds a lot of upper harmonics. And it makes it very aggressive. All right, cool. So there's another part in here that I am very fond of. And what it does is it adds hum and uh, like a machine noise and something called oscillator drift. So what is oscillator drift? In uh, real life analog gear, there's a bunch of capacitors and resistors and all this crazy stuff. Um, and the cycles aren't perfect. Uh, and that could be between, that could, you know, the, the resistance and capacitance uh, capabilities of components changes over time uh, due to heat so we'll have our oscillators drifting and this emulates it 
Look at that. Just look down here. Right, we're getting some jitter. I'll do one like that. So we have a uh, 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 12 o'clock um, analog mode, and then the the green is like none. So what what does that do? Well, that makes it kind of offset and jiggly, and uh, the oscilloscope is kind of having a hard time keeping up with it. But it also adds a bit of nonlinearities to the sound. These little things here. So what does that do? Well, you know, you'll pick up on it for sure, but You'll notice how, you know, if you add a bit of white noise, it'll add nonlinearities too. Well, this is like analog nonlinearities. So with that, with, with that being done, uh, we'll reset it. When you boost the amplifier, you it'll pick up more on those subtle nonlinearities. Listen to that. Where you get you get that analog kind of not hiss, but it's like a, a character that you can't quite put your finger on. Right, in my opinion. I've only used uh, a real analog synth, uh, synth maybe three times in my life. Uh, I can't really afford one. But that that's basically the sound. That's with one oscillator, so imagine, you know what you can do with these simple settings and it, it's a basically all it is is uh, the amplifier so there's something in the amplifier in the amp section here and uh, the analog knob um, I don't know what it does but hopefully someone can explain it but if you listen to it here it's activated by the gate too which is awesome it adds white noise and the, like machine hum which Maybe if someone could figure out, is it European hum at 50 hertz, or is it American at 60 hertz? Who knows? Right, so now we have nothing. Uh, I'll show you something also really cool. The filter actually self-oscillates, which is very, well, it's true to its analog nature. And I'll show you what that means. So when you have the cutoff here, like right here, who cares? Uh, and you boost the resonance up. See, there's even a little bit of a noise floor. That's cute. When you boost the uh, the resonance up, it'll get to where it resonates so much that it becomes a feedback loop. So you get an oscillator with no oscillators running. And it's, uh, you know, made by a gate. And you can do some cool stuff with that with uh, the uh, ADSR, which we're going to get into now. So let's bloop. Yeah. So, for the sake of this uh, webinar, I don't suggest that we get into the the modulation kind of sources here. We're going to focus on just simple stuff. So, uh, we have something called pitch key. No, we shouldn't even do that. Pitch key is basically what the the filter key does. So, uh, we have uh, our one LFO here. So this is our LFO, the LFO amount from the pitch here. We have one here, one here, one here, right? We have our envelope, our modulation envelope right here is right here, right here, and right here, okay? So we have our modulation sources here. So we have our LFO, and I'll show you what that sounds like with the pitch. So I'm just going to play something. Uh, and a cool little trick is you can press hold and you can press a key and it'll it'll play forever. So we'll go an octave up. So it's the the ramp, the saw down, I should say, is adjust is uh, modulating the pitch here, right, right here. So we can have that more to an extreme value. So right now it's synced. Uh, so we'll go quarter note. We 
We can also go eight. And here's something that you don't see in any other LFO uh, on the market today, which is a genius idea, and it is the swing amount. Right? So there's a swing amount, which is fun, which uh, just is kind of like a hard sync doing kind of what the, uh, the, the sync does, but who knows? I'm not a synth expert. Uh, Pulse with does some really neat things. So you can have more of a, a chirpy, which could be, you know, what you're going for. Uh, and what makes, in my opinion, the analog noise kind of you know, the analog sound work uh, is unique um, LFO, like like multiple LFOs affecting one thing or one thing, you know, being affected by multiple LFOs to get that analog sound. And this is a way kind of do it it's not uh, sine triangle square uh, sample and hold and saw there's a lot of cool guys here so so we have a uh, yeah our cosine and then our triangle so you can kind of guess what these do over time right which is a cool effect uh, one of my favorites so we have we have you know white and pink just random not affected by the rate uh, we also have sample and hold uh, uh, affected by uh, white noise or pink noise or brown I think yeah so what sample and hold is is kind of like white noise which is random but what it does is it holds the value at a given point so it kind of looks like this it's just random like so it's like computer computer sound effects from a 1950s science fiction movie which i think is a great effect because it's awesome uh so what you can do is you can take that so you take that and you can have just a two kind of a slight effect Just up and down one note to kind of make it kind of, you know, wibbly wobbly. You can also set that to zero. You can also do that to the pulse width so you can get an interesting kind of sound that way. You can see what it's doing there. LFO goes right up to that. You can also turn off sync and have it uh, per hertz. So yeah, you can go right up into the audible range. Oops, not that. That's not what I meant to do. Um, you can have it uh, as slow as 0 0.06 hertz. So yeah, a rule of thumb is uh, one hertz is like one a second. So if you have it at one or close to one, whatever, that's one uh, cycle per second, like a clock. So a clock said before uh, a clock is a clock ticks at one Hertz so think of it that way you can also have the same LFO being affected by the filter so you can have a lot of changes going on at once we can also do that with the pitch right and this is with no effects which is pretty cool so that's your lfo you can be doing something with the modulation envelope and the first thing that you kind of learn to do with the modulation envelope is to attach an envelope to the filter which is with this guy here this little symbol is the envelope so let's check that out nothing going on okay we're gonna we're gonna have a sweet filter yeah with no with no drive that sounds cool but we want to make a kind of change over time 
So what we'll do, oh, this way. So it's opening and closing via this mod envelope here. So let's bring it down, we'll open that up more. You can see it changing in our little strobe guy here. And we can adjust the attack. So it's more of an interesting uh, filter opening and closing. If we want to make it more interesting, we can uh, adjust the pulse width here. Just this. Which is pretty neat. We can also uh, do the same thing with our pitch here. We have like a tom. Which is cool. Uh, and yeah that's basically that uh let's see here uh self-explanatory amplifier envelope we can have the an attack or and, and or release so when you let go of the key it still kind of continues you can see it here if you want it to be kind of punchy can have uh, it like that. Drive it. You can also experiment with different filters. Different filters feeding in with different overdrives to the amplifier uh, is a neat kind of thing. This is more like a, like a high pass with a notch filter in the middle of it. The different resonances do different things, so it'll kind of boost the low end. I'm into. Uh, yeah. Very cool. Uh, I almost forgot something. So, one of the most important things that you'll be doing when you're working with a filter is uh, the cutoff key. So, right now we have a cutoff key of 100%. Uh, we'll set it to zero so the filter remains uh, static when you go up the keyboard. So, I'll give you an example. Right? I'll go up an octave. Doesn't change when you go up the up uh, the scales in your keyboard. Uh, the the upper harmonic content moves up, so you they compensate that with the filter key. So we'll move that. So as you move up, you'll see the filter open by itself. And that's a good way to kind of. Uh, always be adjusting like your fundamental harmonic and making your uh, synth sound cool and uh, that's all super good sounds uh, you can do the same thing with your uh, uh, your pulse uh, key or your pulse width so we'll have a square we'll have this doing whatever so what I do? Oh, what happened? I broke it. So as you kind of go up, uh, when you're down, it'll be silent. 
as you move up your key or if you go up and scale your to change your key uh, you'll get more of a, a pure uh, square quote unquote pure square so you get more of like dynamic kind of performance going on which uh, is fun uh, so you have that uh, the same thing could be done with your pitch so you want your pitch key to be a hundred percent more or less if you have it at zero uh, no matter what you press, it will be the same key in theory, uh, which you kind of don't want. If you want to play in backwards line, you have it set to negative zero, which could be neat if you want to do weird kind of inversions or something. Um, that's basically basically it for now. I'm not getting into like the routing craziness of it because that's out of the scope of this beginner webinar tutorial thing but it's a, a pretty cool plugin and I had fun making this video and you should share it and like it and uh, I don't know have fun all right take care everyone